Hello and welcome back to Live View Showcase. Uh, now I know it's been uh, quite a bit of time since my last episode, but at the same time we've got plenty of stuff to uh, show you with regards to uh, the G Shell, Project Prism and plenty of other stuff which has been happening uh, throughout Live G. Uh, so I'm really excited to show you a bit about that. Um, now this video is actually going to be a bit shorter than my previous video. Um, that's mainly because there's going to be stuff that I've already introduced in my previous video. So if you haven't seen episode one of Luffy Showcase, do check it out. That way you can uh, understand some of the stuff that I'm going to be exploring through today. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so uh, let's get started with G-Shell. So you can see here I've got my prism. Um, let's turn it on. And you should see that uh, nothing much has changed on here, but uh, trust me, there's been a lot that has been happening to G Shell recently, uh, especially on mobile. Um, now, <laughs> I don't know where to start really, let's go into the switcher. Uh, that's the most logical step. So, here we're launched right into um, our Adapt UI demo, um, of course, our demo app. Um, and there's lots of lovely stuff like animations and things which are coming on well. Um, not bad for uh, quite a low performance phone. Um, uh, yeah, let's start with the text input improvements. So you'll notice that our keyboard pops up as usual. Uh, but what's new is we've now got these typing suggestions, which are working out really well. Um, so I can type in, I don't know, let's type in the word, I need to think of a word now, um, computer. And as you can see, there's typing suggestions which come up so I can go computer uh, and it types it all there, which is quite nice. Um, and you can, and it also allows you to do auto completion sentences. So we can go the, uh, oh, not W, the machine words. And it can continue, um, it can continue to complete your sentence. So you can type really fast. Um, which is really handy, um, and this is actually using only a small amount of training data at the moment, um, based on a few Wikipedia articles. I'll show you uh, more about the training stuff in a second, it's quite exciting. Uh, but as you can see, uh, even with just a small amount of training data, uh, it works quite well uh, for, you know, uh, correcting stuff um, and suggesting stuff. So we can type in, we can even type in misspellings of stuff. So I need to think of another word now. <laughs> Um, let's go back with the, the word machine. So if I accidentally spell it wrong, like M-A-C-H-I-N-E, or even that, you can see that, uh, well, we've got our spelling underline there. <laughs> uh, but you can see that it actually comes up with the suggestion there, which is quite good. And there it is, machine. Um, and we spelt it right, so that's good. Um, now that's using a JavaScript library called uh, fuse.js, which is quite useful. Um, used it quite a few times now and it allows you to do this kind of fuzzy matching which um, with a bit of tuning you can actually get it to work really well with keyboard stuff and for the sentence completion things um, that's using uh, n-grams so that's um, kind of thing to do with uh, natural language analysis uh, which I kind of uh, wrote um, some codes to do on here which is quite good um, you've seen all this uh, demo stuff already, um, so I'll get out of it. And the way to do that now is to double tap the Live G button, and it comes up like that. We can swipe it away, like so. Really nice, um, quite intuitive. And let's go back. Let's go to the home screen by single tapping it. Um, as you can see, I've got the. <laughs> I'm just getting icons to work quite well. Um, it's a bit of a weird thing going on there, but uh, I shall ignore it for the purposes of this demo. Um, now you'll notice that there's actually a new settings app um, on this list, um, and it's not coming soon, unlike in the previous video, I think it said. Um, but yeah, let's open that. So it actually comes up with information. Um, now I'm going to go into the network options. I'm going to have to blur out some of these SSIDs here because uh, you're not meant to see them. <laughs> you can freeze them to work out where I live. Um, so, but I'll choose our one that we're connected to, um, and I don't get much signal strength here, only one bar. Um, but you can see channel details, that kind of information, including um, how fast it is. So here it says uh, 195 megabits per second, and on channel 6, 270 megabits per second. So 
That's quite nice. Um, and you get that on the whole Wi-Fi list as well, which is really nice. Uh, let's move down to accessibility. The only option right now is switch navigation, of course, because uh, that's the only thing I've implemented yet. But, you know, it's a really nice toggle to uh, enter switch navigation uh, when needed. And you'll be able to do that with a bunch of other settings as well. Um, I plan to also add other options like theming, um, dark theme, of course, um, as well as authentication options for sending your passcode and stuff, which would be nice. And we can view about this device. Live GOS version 0.1.0, blah, 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 and the serial number and everything, which is nice. Um, so there's stuff to expand in the settings app, but as you can see, it's a proof of concept and it's working really well so far. So that's good news. And I'll swipe that away. Uh, sphere, I don't think as much has changed here. Nope, but I think the only difference is that the URL bar, uh, it shows a shortened version when you're not focused in on it, but when you tap on it, it shows the full version. Which I think I can, I might not be able to scroll it, sometimes you can scroll something. Something, something to fix anyway, <laughs> there's always something to fix. Uh, as you can see on our GitHub page again, uh, which leads me on to the next thing to show you. Um, Live you docs, which even though our main website isn't launched yet, we can go to docs dot uh, I find it funny how I haven't implemented like URL suggestions yet, so it comes up with just normal words. Um, it's quite funny, but I'll soon add extra enhanced stuff for that. So this is our new site um, for viewing documentation about everything. Adapt UI getting started and that kind of stuff and you can browse or well, we can see the demo although it probably won't work because it'd be in a new window getting started guide and as you can see you can see the code and everything which is really nice um, and works really well in here and you can view it on desktop as well as you can see and it you know it really kind of expands to fill the desktop real estate quite nicely uh, with the sidebar now let's get back to uh, our homepage, it's working. I think that's about it to show you on G-Shell front. Ah, but we don't stop there, you see, uh, because uh, G-Shell actually has been uh, designed to run on desktop as well. This is part of a few uh, modifications uh, to the code that I've made to allow it to be essentially convergent. Um, as you can see, it's basically the same interface uh, on the lock screen here. Of course, with the time being shifted to the right rather than being on the center, like on mobile. Um, but let's go in here. Um, this doesn't really adapt too well to um, <laughs> desktop, of course, but this is only temporary. Um, <clears throat> if we go back into our switcher, you'll see that we're actually on a windowed interface, a stacking uh, window interface. Um, that re works really well for this kind of screen size rather than on mobile. So. You can see that we're running the same apps um, and we're doing stuff there, etc. Um, but on desktop, which is really nice, and you've got these windows that you can resize and everything adapts, <laughs> just like Adapt UI, I suppose, uh, to the dimensions of not just the screen but also the windows as well. And you can also min uh, maximize the windows like that. Did you see that animation there? <laughs> Pretty proud of it. Um, as well as, you know, you can put it into like a phone kind of sized interface as well for, I don't know, if you want to test to see if your app runs on mobile or something, um, which is quite nice. So that's cool. And you can minimize them as well. And here's the, essentially the equivalent of double tapping the LiveG button to show you all your open apps. Um, it's basically a, kind of a grid version of the switcher. And if we launch multiple apps here, let's go to the demo again, uh, Sphere, why not? Oop. As you can see, it kind of arranges it, and if you open loads of apps, I don't know, I can, I can get away with doing that right now. Um, yeah, lots of them. <laughs> you can see that they tile quite nicely, um, rather than being all linear on mobile, which is quite cool. Um, and we can close them uh, by dragging them I'll probably add like an X button as well for those who are not on touch screen and it's a bit annoying. Um, 
but yeah, it's, it's a quite a nice improvement. Quite a lot of modern operating systems on the desktop have this kind of thing, and pretty glad to have it on uh, G Shell as well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, and of course it says no open apps when you've got no open apps as well. Um, and we've got this menu here, um, which is basically designed. Now the reason why it's quite tall is because it's designed to mimic the kind of similar kind of layout to the mobile home screen um, in terms of the app icon placement because you'll be able to sync your app icons and their positions and when we add like kind of uh, gadget kind of thing widget kind of thing like how Android and recently iOS have uh, you'll be able to sync that uh, onto your desktop as well which would be really nice um, and of course you've got settings here which works just like on the phone, except for I should blur all this out. <laughs> this is a bit annoying, I'm having to create work for myself. Oh dear. Um, so that's cool. Um, and of course you've got Sphere as well, which isn't really yet uh, optimised for desktop yet. As you can see, it's not really a tabbed interface. Um, but that's something to add, um, which would be quite nice. Um, as you can see, web pages scale quite nicely on it, and we can go to docs.libg.tech as I was just showing earlier. It loads. Probably slow internet or something. There we go. <laughs> Took its time. Um, we can view information about G Shell and I don't know um, the input method editor, which is that keyboard suggestions system, um, and we can view information online, which is cool. Uh, that's about it to show you on the G, uh, G Shell side of things on desktop as well. So you've seen both the mobile version and now the desktop version, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a bit of a whistle stop tour of some of the development improvements that we've been making to LiveG. Um, I'm going to start with um, some of the keyboard stuff that I was showing you earlier with the suggestions. Um, and this is the code uh, as part of a repository for uh, training the input method editor, um, which is essentially just a virtual <coughs> keyboard which comes up. Um, and this is going to be quite brief, but um, we've got a, basically a script which uh, kind of processes um, text that we input into our training system, um, such as Wikipedia articles, uh, like these ones here. This is a Wikipedia contents for uh, the article on computers, and this is one on YouTube, of all things. Um, basically just some popular uh, Wikipedia articles that I ripped off uh, the internet. Um, and, you know, they're relatively long, but uh, there's only two articles which I've ripped off right now. Um, so not too much data, but as you saw earlier, it is actually quite effective. Um, and this script essentially uh, converts that data into n-grams, which are basically kind of uh, arrays or vectors of words, and then uh, the next word to suggest if the person typed in the previous words, essentially. So it's just a quite a simple way of um, auto-completing sentences, but it's quite effective, so that's quite cool. Um, as well as it assembles that dictionary which um, allows for fuzzy finding to happen. Um, now that's pretty cool, so <clears throat> we'll move on to G-Shell's code. Um, a lot has happened, um, there's a lot more files now, <laughs> um, unsurprisingly. Um, it's rapidly growing to be honest. Uh, I've been extending the input.js file which now includes not just a keyboard layout class but also uh, an input method class so this is the tool this is essentially the engine which processes that training data and takes the user input and what it does is it outputs the next suitable words uh, for that the user can choose by pressing the relevant buttons so that's quite sweet um, a lot of code's gone into that and quite handily, although I can't really show you without having to tweak it a bit um, right now. Um, it will also work for not just English, uh, Latin uh, scripts, but it will also work for languages such as Chinese, uh, Japanese, Korean, which are ideographic languages, um, which uh, rely on this kind of technology uh, to allow users to input 
text in their own language uh, using just a standard ISO or ANSI keyboard. So uh, that's pretty cool and it's quite a vital um, feature for many uh, international users. Um, Examples of uh, software which works on other operating systems is uh, on Windows, I think you have the built-in IME, uh, similar to what this is. Um, on Linux, you can install a thing called FCITX, um, <laughs> bit of a weird name. Um, let me just open a text editor, and as you can see, can I increase the font size? No, let's, let's just use video, <laughs> Visual Studio Code, that's easy. I can make it big, yeah, so you should be able to see it now. Um, if I do shift and space, that switches me to Chinese and I can go ni hao, ni hao ma, uh, wo, wo jiao, James, and, and simple stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so that, that's how I would enter Chinese text uh, using a standard keyboard, because Chinese has so many characters that it's impossible to um, you know, kind of map them all to a key, so it uses the pinion input method to uh, basically allow this to happen, so that's cool. Um, next up, the final thing, um, it's going to be brief, uh, I swear, <laughs> um, is Astronaut. Uh, now, Astronaut is essentially our new UI framework, which goes hand in hand with Adapt UI. Um, it essentially allows you to make apps with using just JavaScript rather than having to dabble in with HTML and all the code becoming messy and stuff. Um, so it's a really nice and clean way of coding. Now, an example of Astronaut code I'll show you is the settings app itself. That's coded in Astronaut. Um, and as you can see, this is just a JavaScript file. The only HTML we have is boilerplate code to import our script.js file, which is quite cool. Um, it's a bit of a mash of things like React, um, possibly Vue, uh, jQuery though, um, that's quite a big influence because it's quite a nice syntax, however dated jQuery is these days. Um, and it's really taken advantage of um, kind of the JavaScript, JavaScript syntax uh, to essentially kind of have this kind of element structure, which is quite nice. So essentially this is this is just vanilla JavaScript um, using uh, ECM ECMAScript modules, um, so you, you don't have to bother with using JSX and uh, Webpack and that kind of stuff. Um, it's all vanilla JavaScript, but it allows you to kind of code quite semantically um, using kind of an element kind of structure, and it lets you define your own components and stuff. So it's really cool. Um, and there's more information on livg docs, uh, docs.livg.tech, uh, if you want to learn more about that, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, anyway, that's enough of the development stuff. It's been going for about six minutes now, so uh, yeah, I'll end that. So yeah, that's about it to show you this uh, episode. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, now, if you want to contribute to any of the livg projects, such as G Shell or uh, you know even our IME uh, training uh, repository, then you're more than welcome to help out. It would be very much appreciated. Um, there's the GitHub uh, organization link uh, shown on screen now. Um, now, our website is admittedly still in development. It has been for quite a few years now, but we are actually making uh, a lot of progress with it. It's, it's a big website, um, but we're getting there. So we'll be glad to launch that soon. Um, but in the meantime, as I say, you can uh, check out our GitHub. We're also on Twitter, um, where you can receive a lot of news about our latest updates with LivG, um, which is quite exciting, as well as uh, right here on YouTube. So yeah, there's plenty to check out. But uh, until the next uh, LivG Showcase episode, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and see you soon. Bye!